بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه معين أما بعد وعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين وقال تعالى وذكر عبادنا إبراهيم وإسحاق ويعقوب أولي الأيدي والأبصار وإسماعيل واليسعى وكل من الأخيار So my dear brothers uh, and sisters Sisters are not here anyway inshallah We have to remember them as well so, Alhamdulillah We spent few days in the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And today inshallah we are going to leave this city with the intention to come back again and again, inshallah. So always when you leave the city of Medina, the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, always make intention of Allah make me to come back here again and again. This should not be our last journey. You know, many, many more journeys to come, inshallah, as long as we are alive. And uh, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made us to spend time actually nicely here. You know, because of these classes, what happens is, you know, you can see all the time you're busy, very little sleep, no time for shopping, no time for walking around. Because if, if you don't have this class, you've got three hours in the morning and then afternoon classes, you know, if you don't have this classes, then what you will do in this time? Either sleeping or walking around. So these classes actually at least they have save our time from, from any wasting. And second thing, Alhamdulillah, we are learning. Uh, you know, and, uh, and make sure that what we learn, uh, write it down. Because sometimes we can see really some of the sentences that teachers teach you can think maybe it is very simple, but sometimes they are, you know, result of, you know, long reflections and, uh, you know, a, a lot of learning. You know, so it, it will benefit you, inshallah, in the future when you teach and also when you reflect yourself, it will be helpful. So whatever you have been learning, you know, take notes. You know, don't think that, you know, I know it anyway because you will forget so easily. So and in this class, like, you know, tafsir class and the 40 hadith, you know, we, and even the seerah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because the way I was teaching seerah, it is not, you know, just dates and, you know, uh, you know, it actually more how to take lessons from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to make the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more relevant to, 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 uh, uh, to us. So, Alhamdulillah, you know, we should thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He has, uh, you know, helped us and He has accepted us to be in the, in the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now we are going to, uh, inshallah, the city of Makkah Al-Mukarramah, uh, within Tanshaf Umrah, we are there, we are going to stay for a few days and also there will be some classes and learning, inshallah. Try to understand, you know, what these cities are and why Hajj and Umrah, they are so important in this, this religion. So first thing actually is when the Quran starts talking about Hajj and Umrah in Surah Al-Baqarah, first time, you know, the whole chapter of Hajj and Umrah, Quran starts with a verse, Ya ayyuhal amanu ista'inu bis sabri was salah. O believers, O those who believe, seek help with the prayer and with the sabr. The so thing really is the life of the believers are summarized in two actions, Salah and Sabr. And the whole region is just details of the Salah and Sabr. And Hajj and Umrah, they are training of the Salah and Sabr. Because Ibrahim has been made, has been chosen, you know, after long, because Ibrahim is the first major messenger and prophet, السلام, who from very beginning, you know, have been thinking. And Allah SWT said about, about Ibrahim A.S. that وَآتَيْنَاهُ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ We gave Ibrahim A.S. the wisdom from very childhood. So when he was a child, he was a thinker. He was not like other children to waste his time. You know, all the time thinking, understanding properly. Grown up in a family, but he's able to, different, to think different from them. Because when you grow up in a family, in, 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 among people, then you never think really, you know, why people doing something. But just it's a habit. So like for example, people who have grown up in Indian subcontinent, they see everybody going, uh, uh, you know, for the prayer, they have hired, topi. So they grow up with this, they become, you know, learned people, they become doctors, engineers, they become alim, they become maulan, they become any, any, it remains all the life in that time that when you pray, you must have this hired. They never question really why we do this. Is it really Sunnah? Is it really from the Prophet Sallallahu It never come. Even the people who are ulama, they are mashallah. And then after that, if somebody teaches them, they cannot accept. 
So uh, what is the reason is because people don't think. People don't think uh, you know, differently. People don't question things. Ibrahim al Islam's praise in the Quran is that he was able to think. Means uh, his father used to make idols and worship them. Ibrahim could ask question, why these idols? Why do, why do you worship them? How they benefit you? And he not only could question, he asked, he, he really raised a question. So that why Quran says about Ibrahim Islam that he was given his wisdom from very beginning, from childhood, all the time thinking, thinking differently, asking the question and making effort to know the answer. And when he knows the answer, so first thing actually is I, I mentioned earlier, Ibrahim's first quality is this you know, intellectual courage. Means he could raise a question. Second thing, once he gets the answer, he's not shy. Then he thinks it is his duty to teach people properly. Then after the, once he realized that his, his, his father and his people when they worship the idols, they have done mistake, it is wrong, it is not right. Then he asked them, why are you doing this? They can't benefit you, they cannot harm you, you know, they don't listen to you, nothing. They don't listen to him. Then Ibrahim wants to, you know, basically uh, do something bigger, to, de to do deconditioning of their mind. So what he does, he just, you know, in a long story, I don't want to go into detail, he goes and smashes the, all the idols. When Ibrahim is measured the idols, you know, the purpose actually is not to humiliate them. The purpose is not to show that, you know, Ibrahim does not care about the idols. It is not the purpose. Ibrahim's purpose, only purpose is, because since uh, he has been teaching them gently, they could not understand. So now Ibrahim wants to demonstrate, you see, I have been telling you that your idols don't benefit, don't harm, even they cannot protect themselves. So he smashed all of them. And when people came, they say, Ibrahim must have done this. Ibrahim wants to teach. They ask, they call Ibrahim. And when Ibrahim came and they asked him, Anta fa'alta bi hadha, hadha bi alihatina ya Ibrahim. O oh Ibrahim, have you done this with our gods? So Ibrahim has done anyway. Everybody knows. It's not Ibrahim going to lie. So Ibrahim, but Ibrahim's purpose to teach. Ibrahim said very calmly, nicely. You know, all the people are against him. He's only one person. He said what? Bal fa'alahu kabiruhum hadha fas'aluhum in kanu yantiqoon. The big idol, he is the one who has done. Ask them if they can speak. You see, that's what he wants to teach. He wants to teach. They even cannot speak. They cannot defend you. Then they have no answer. Ibrahim's purpose. You see, he's a thinking person. Then people worship, uh, you know, sun and moon and stars. And for each story, Ibrahim al Islam comes, appears with them, and says, yeah, this is my Lord. You know, those people become happy. Uh, they're around him. He wants to teach them. And then when the star disappears, moon disappears, and, uh, you know, sun disappears, Ibrahim al Islam says that there's sentence which really is an amazing sentence in the history of the mankind. You know, I always think after La ilaha illallah, there is no sentence more powerful than Ibrahim's sentence, La uhibbul afirin. He did not say, I don't, uh, you know, love the sun and moon, but I don't worship because they disappear. No, he denies all of them. He said, I don't love those who disappear. This thinking, this really, you know, it is not easy. This sentence only can come after long thinking, long reflection, you know, thinking. He said anything, meaning is, when something disappears, it is dependent. So how can I can worship, us, you know, something which is dependent itself? Why don't I go to someone who is not dependent? Sun depends, moon depends, stars depends, jobs depends, you know, your farming depends. You know, money depends, position depends, wives depends, children depends, the king depends, everything depends. So why worship them? <coughs> they come and go. They are there, then they die. I don't worship them. You know, it's really a big sentence for Ibrahim Islam. You know, and, uh, it, you know, and then it becomes clear, you know, that in his people, after, you know, they can make the message so deeply, so properly, still they did not listen. So Ibrahim Islam, with the command of Allah SWT, he leaves his people. Inni muhajirun ila rabbi. He leaves them. And then when he left, Allah SWT gave him you know, a reward. Then he got you know, from his uh, uh, wife, wife Ismail, his wife uh, Hajra, son Ismail. And then he got also from his wife uh, Sarah, the son Ishaq, you know, two sons have been given. And then also Allah SWT gave him good tidings. Then from Ishaq, you're going to have Yaqub. Amazing people. And then Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, when his son Ismail had a little you know, born and just a young you know, infant child, and his wife Hajra is newly you know, married with him. Uh, Allah SWT commands him to take uh, you know, the son and the wife to a land. And Allah SWT defined and just came and told him where the land is, where there is no population, no water, no food, no tree, nothing. And Ibrahim comes there. Ibrahim has no idea why there. And then Allah SWT commands him, leave your wife and your son here. Ibrahim, so we are, Ibrahim is thinking before Iman. 
before iman he thinks understand after iman what is it surrenders to understand clearly every question that you make is before believing think properly allah wants you to not think understand but once you know he is your lord then if he commands you anything whether you understand don't understand you must do full submission now ibrahim see new life is starting of submission before was ibrahim's life of thinker thinking prophet iman hanifiya turning away from everything to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now next stage of life is coming what full submission allah commanded to leave surrender ibrahim left his wife hajra is following him asking where are you leaving ibrahim wants to have the full fa- whole family as a people of submission he did not answer second time she asked he did not answer third time she she said you know is it command of your lord ibrahim wants his wife to think like him she understand without answer if you don't tell her yeah, it is my command of my lord there she not going to learn he wants her to think that ibrahim who loves his children so much his wife so much why is going to leave then no can be no reason other than last command so when she said is it allah's command ibrahim said yeah, i said allah's 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 command then she said okay then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let us down and then she remains there and then you know cha- you know and then a child is crying for water she then she runs uh, to the hills uh, to find out the water from safa to marwa from marwa to safa to child seven times it happened until the angels come and the water you know gushing from the under the feet of feet of the ismail the, uh, and then you know she becomes so happy the water is there and the water is there then the birds come then the people from you know banujur whom they are passing by they they come and they ask permission to settle around her you know it become like you know a small population people you know now growing and then after a while allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask you now you go you know how you see how i look after your family without water how i you see this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to do then ibrahim al salam comes and you know child is grown up now new last final test for, for ibrahim after submission then allah said to ibrahim go and slaughter to your your son in dream but ibrahim you know full submission you know if we see dream like that we see you no know, it has a, dreams have meaning dreams don't mean really go and slaughter dream mean full obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but ibrahim take the dream literally and allah loves this from ibrahim ibrahim was so intelligent so clever but in submission he literally he followed the lit, you know literally everything in our time what people do they fiqh al maqasid if ibrahim was faqih al maqasid what he should do he said no everything is maqsad child is born for a maqsad for a purpose we should look, look after him sacrifice a child means to devote him for the religion but ibrahim did not love this fiqh al maqasid ibrahim was full submission n- literally following allah allah's command and ibrahim also could say dream does not mean to do now it could be after 10 years 20 years not today but same day but ibrahim also wants his son to be with him so he asked his son ismail that i this i have seen in my dream what do you think so do you think if ibrahim's son said oh my father don't kill me he's not going to kill him no he's going to do anyway but he wants ismail also to have same belief this ismail said oh my father you do you know what you have been commanded you will find me among sabirin this really sabr patience so then ibrahim al salam does and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listen to him so ibrahim secondly life is this is the whole thing iman and then islam submission and islam has got ibrahim's islam has got two main parts salah and sabr sabr you can see his life leaving the wife and wife has sabr the son has sabr and the main sabr of the son is he is being slaughtered and he say you, you will find him among the sabrin and salah of ibrahim how you can see allah commands ibrahim to build the house ibrahim builds the house for the people who do prayer and you know tawaf and qiyam and ruku and sajda when ibrahim built the kaaba then he realized now he is going to be commanded to settle here he is no he knows very well then he made dua oh allah make my family part of my family to settle here to so ibrahim's family basically what has it ibrahim's family is example for all the believers for both things for iman and islam and in islam his family is example for what for salah you know doing relation with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deep deep relation not superficial relation you know all, all the time just you know submission to him properly ruku sajda tawaf i'tikaf the quran mission make build my house for the people who do tawaf for those who do i'tikaf for those who do ruku and sajda and qiyam you know what qiyam ruku sajda is you know all that attending you know in standing in front of your lord ibrahim has been commanded so this is training of the salah and the sabr is this struggle a place where there no water no food he can stay there for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is that why we are commanded to do hajj and umrah why to remember ibrahim's sacrifices to remember the story of the sabr and salah which established because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted 
and then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he followed the footsteps of his father Ibrahim, and he also does same thing in the sabr and salah. So basically, Hajj and Umrah they are training of what salah and sabr. That's why the chapter starts Ya ayyuladina amanu istaqinu bi sabr wa salah. This whole chapter of the Hajj and Umrah is what salah and sabr because it is just a submission to Allah subhanahu wa taala. You know and you can see the believers don't care what they're wearing, you know, unsewn clothes. Nobody does like that, but their believers do like that. They don't, you know, they don't care about anything. And then, you know, before even coming there, uh, you know, they make prayer, they keep the saying, you know, part of submission. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, labbaik, la sharika lak, labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata lak, wa la mulka la sharika lak. Why these sentences? To announce the submission. To make very clear, because when, submission is from heart, but when you say with the tongue, it really goes deep. So these sentences are for submission. Oh, my Lord, we are just we listen to Ibrahim's call, and now we are here. Because you know, labbaik means what? Labbaik or labbi means when you somebody calls you and you say, No, I'm here. I'm listening to you. So labbaik is one talbiya, but labbaik means twice. Labbaik means I'm listening to, I'm listening to, I'm here, I'm present. And they say labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Not only labbaik, many labbaiks all the time. And why this come? Because Ibrahim al -Islam, when he built the Kaaba, Allah SWT wanted to, to make the Kaaba as a training center for the Sabr and Salah. So he said to Ibrahim, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجْ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ طَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ You know, announce for the Hajj, the people will come So labbaik is, to response of the call of Ibrahim. Ibrahim called people and now we say we are there. Ibrahim, you call and we are here. We're listening to you. So everybody from all over the world, they basically come in to attend the call of Ibrahim al Islam for turning at the Sabr Salah. So keep remembering this thing. That basically Hajj and Umrah are what? These visits, they are not tourism. They are not enjoyment. They are not to celebrate the you know, bricks and the stones. They are not to see that how nice the building of the uh, of, uh, mosque of the Prophet وسلم, and how great the building of the Haram. It is not for that really. It is all suffering. It really, it, imagine really that in, in the time, you know, the, the thing when the Prophet وسلم, used to go from Medina to Mecca, did, you go by, did he go by coach, by plane, walking on the camel, many, many days. Sometimes there water, sometimes there no water. No, no water in the, so much struggle, so much suffering that how they, they're going. And when Ibrahim's family settled there, you know, how much suffering was there? You see, Hajra is looking for water. There was no water. And how Allah SWT looks after them? It is all turning of the suffering, uh, you know, uh, 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 and, and the sabr. Then you be patient. Don't complain. Meaning is, listen to your Lord, and whatever difficulty come in his path, don't complain. You know, be patient and expect reward from him. Tell me what I've seen really once I came for Hajj and with a group of people from England. Every single step, you know, people you see how nice is the system in England, order and this and that. Here, actually, all the time they complain, the flies are here, you know. It is, you know. So, if I was thinking really, the thing really, you are here, but your mind is somewhere else. This, this place is not chosen because, you know, it is a, a place of easiness. This place actually has been chosen because it is difficult. So, people don't come here to enjoy the life. People only come here, you know, if they love Ibrahim. If they love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if really they want to learn how to do submission, you don't come here for tourism. It is not a place for that. This place actually should be kept like that. When you come here, it should be ready for suffering. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala don't does not want believers to be lazy and just you know easy life. It is very bad for the believers. You know, wake up in the night. You know, prayer. You know, walking. You know, suffering, struggle. You know, uh, you can say tiredness. No complaint. Keep moving. You know, all the time, whatever time you've got, you know, tawaf, qiyam, ruku, sajda, that's how the life is. Do you see Ibrahim ever has a rest? No. How much Ibrahim has traveled, can you imagine, on, on his feet? From Iraq, come to Syria, from Syria he go to Egypt, from Egypt he come to Makkah al mukarrama then from Makkah he goes again to Syria, his two wives. To his wives, you know, we have, people in England, they have two wives, maybe in the same house. Some people have two wives, but in their own house. They don't actually even afford to have a house. You know. But you know, Ibrahim's two wives are not in the same place. One is in Makkah and one is in Syria. So take this thing. Ibrahim spent some time here, some time there. How, how long, how much he, he keeps moving? You know, all the time. He never stops. He never said, now I've reached to Allah I did full submission, I should rest. No. Allah make him Imam. 
to understand properly Hajj and Umrah really are not true. It is not really, it is really this from your heart. When you say Labbaik, think properly that Ibrahim called me and I'm listening to him. And the call was for what? For training of the sabr. To be patient, I have patient. Don't, don't complain. Tell me actually when you protest in, in London. Is it a complaint? Protest actually is complaint. Protest is from shaitan. Ibrahim never protested. Ibrahim's, Ibrahim's way has been, do what is best, and what, if you don't get what you want, ask Allah. Ibrahim never asked people. Ibrahim's children ask people. Ibrahim's children beg people, give me peace. Ibrahim's children only ask peace from Allah SWT. Ibrahim's children don't ask anybody else, don't beg to anybody. You know, Ibrahim don't, does not come to his kings and ask him. Ibrahim, Ibrahim never begged anybody. Ibrahim so we always have been inni wajjahtu wajhiyya lilladhi fatras samawati wal arda hanifa. I have directed my face to one who created the heaven and earth. Not you know who is the king of a small tiny country. No, the one who created the whole heaven and earth. Hanifan. And I turned to him from every single thing else. That's what Ibrahim, Ibrahim did. And now Ibrahim's children, they want to protest. They want to make march. They want to make peace march. They want to beg the for the peace. Think properly. Ibrahim's children are not for the part. Ibrahim's children are to listen to their Lord. And, and if difficulty comes, they, are, they have suffered. They, they are patient. And then the Lord rewards them. You know, Ibrahim did not establish any kingdom or empire. No. But what Ibrahim established really is much, much bigger than kingdom and empire. Definitely, Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmullah, you know, somebody complained to the ruler of Syria that Ibn Taymiyyah is gathering his, his followers to take the kingdom from you. So he called Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahmullah, Ibn Taymiyyah said to the king, do you think I'm going to take the, you know, your kingdom? Your kingdom and kingdom of all the Mongols is not equal to me even for one pence. Do you think I'm going to take this? Ibrahim, what Ibrahim has, it is a million times better than the kingdom of any, any king. Kingdom of Suleiman, any kingdom. If you follow Ibrahim, what you get really is no king, king, king can get. You know, this is depth, depth of the relation to Allah SWT. It is so deep, really, imagine. So when you go to Umrah, it is not simple thing to call it. It is really much, much deeper. Meaning is, now you want to establish relations with Allah SWT, and if difficulty or problem comes, don't complain to anybody. Full patience. Even somebody next to you should not feel that you have a problem. Nobody. Only to Allah SWT. All the time remembering him and difficulty. But you know, you should be strong. Believers should be strong. You know, somebody has so many illnesses. Every part of the body was defected. So many illness. And he used to say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. People ask him, you know, why you say Alhamdulillah? Why you think Allah? You have nothing actually sound in your body anyway. Everything has so much problem. So the person said, you know, he has given me a tongue which can thank. So I thank you for that. You know, think how much Allah has given you. And you complain. If you become like that, people love you. People worship you. Ibrahim's way is, people become that way. You know, the, the way of the other people is, they, 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 you earn money, and then with the money you buy things. Ibrahim's way is what? Ibrahim's way is, you don't have money, but you buy the free people. You don't buy the slaves, you buy free people. If you follow Ibrahim, the free people, kings become your slaves. The Ibrahim's way makes kings your slaves. And the way of the worldly people is what? To buy slaves. With the money, you can buy slaves. And with following Ibrahim Islam, you can buy the free people. You can buy the kings. The Ibrahim's way is very, very deeply. Turn away from everything to Allah SWT. And keep saying, La uhibbul afideen. You know, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik, La Sharika Lak, Labbaik, Inna Alhamda wa Ni'mat Lak, Wa Ramulk, La Sharika Lak, all the time keep saying. So anyway, this is summary because we don't have much time. So keep that in mind, that Hari Umrah, they basically are much deeper. They, have, they are there only to teach you Salah and Sabr. And Salah and Sabr both are what? Companionship of Allah SWT. Inna Allah Ma'as Sabri. Allah is with those who pray. And Allah with those who do sabr. Why Allah did not say ma'al musallin? Because that's obvious anyway. Only sabr and sabrin need to have in Allah ma'al sabrin. But otherwise the meaning is in Allah ma'al sabrin wa ma'al musallin. Those who pray and those who do sabr, Allah with them to seek help with that. So inshallah, we'll do the, the umrah and uh, I'll explain some fiqh of the umrah as well. And if you have any question, you can, you can ask. Uh, 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 the way is that in a haram, you know, people when they go for Hayumrah, they have to put on a haram. Uh, and a haram uh, it starts with the mawaqit. Miqat are certain places, uh, you know, before that or at that place, you must put on your haram. A haram means uh, for the men, you know, unsewn cloth, two clothes uh, with the intention of Umrah. I'll mention how to make intention. So women, men are not allowed to have 
any sewn cloth anything which sewn and uh, they should uncover the head the head should not never could be covered and for the feet you are in you know, kind of hanafi madhab which i could i prefer in this matter because you know it is more caution it is easy for us anyway you know it, you, you should uncover three bones three rising bones so they should be uncovered when you do uh, you know put on a sandal so three bones are these two bones this anchors on this one and this uh, in the middle the rising bone these three bones should be uncovered is it clear to everybody so now we don't need to, you to tell you which sandal you to go by you know yourself you know just you know have think properly you don't need and somebody comes and take your finger and hold your hand to say this by this one no you you decide allah the way to instruct his slaves and then they do decide to so anything that can you know wherever anything you can buy which where these two and this three, this bone three are uncovered that's fine anything like that so that's what you need eh, to do for the women they will remain in their normal clothes they don't need to have any new clothes but what they need if uh, some people are having niqab or covering the face they should uncover the face to so women say ihram in the women say ihram in the face uh, we will advise people for the men for the women it is easy for the men we will advise because you know if you go to miqat and then you start opening your suitcase and this and that will take a lot of time the best thing really come after ghor prayer put on both sheet both you know and put your clothes in the suitcase then you don't need to uh, in miqat to take off all those the best thing really is put your sandal from here and your your clothes of ihram from here don't make intention that what you do and then after the wali we come to dhul hulaifa dhul hulaifa is the miqat of the people of madina to so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had made miqat for everybody for, for every place so for the for iraq the miqat is that irq you know for for sham miqat is juhfa for people of yemen and those who come from that miqat is yalamlam to so for every place he make miqat miqat of the people of madina is dhul hulaifa now it is called for a long time abiyar ali so there used to be some well set people named abiyar ali so you can it be abiyar ali or dhul hulaifa there now a masjid and there lot of uh, you know bathrooms you can have shower to so when we arrive there you can go there and have shower put on since we are living after dhuhr prayer so it is be- better here and though we combine between dhuhr asr you remember we travel so i advise people don't pray asr here because in, you know after asr prayer you know any any nafl prayer is makruh so what we, and, and it is good to start with ihram with the, with the prayer to rakah prayer so i advise pray your dhuhr prayer and nothing else and then when we arrive uh, there in dhul hulaifa there we can pray in jamaa our own jamaa to raka asr and after asr prayer then we make intention for ihram is it clear so before ihram be, before intention you can use soap you can use perfume you can use anything as soon as we have done two raka prayer and after the salam we will make intention so you will say in you know allahumma inni uridu al umrata you know i i want to do umrah fayassirha li wa taqabbalha minni o oh allah you know you can say in english language o oh allah i make i have intention to do umrah so make easier for me and accept from me i mentioned yesterday the niyyah is always in in, uh, in islam from the heart no doubt about that so this is not actually niyyah what actually happening is in hajj and umrah we want every single part of the body to confirm what we doing the, the body is confirming by cloth you know the heart is confirming mind is kind of thinking and also tongue tongue should say that you know i'm going for hajj and umrah you know everybody know declare this and say love back loudly every all the people around you know that why it, it is very important to declare it from your tongue so you people should say with the tongue so it is not because of intention it is basically to everybody know that you you are not because in the past when people know that somebody is in ihram they should not they, they would not attack the person they would be think you know is safe so this actually what declaration so that why in the hajj and umrah okay listen you know we will we'll inshallah time for question because you know people need to mic and all those to in, sorry or because to allahumma inni uridu uridu al-umrata or you can say inni uridu al-umrata lillah or allahumma inni allahumma inni uridu al-umra fayassirha li wa taqabbalha minni o allah i want umrah so make it easy for me and accept it from me inshallah when we are there somebody will say and i will be repeat once you said this then immediately say labbaik allahumma labbaik labbaik la sharika lak labbaik innal hamda wan ni'mata lak wal mulk la sharika lak once you said these words now you are muhrim 
now you cannot apply any perfume you know and uh, you cannot men cannot wear any sewn cloth and uh, men and women they cannot have any relation uh, you know and a desire of the sex you know it all forbidden from that time until people come out uh, from, from 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 the haram and all the time keep saying labbaik especially when you see other people in haram say labbaik loud you know make it clear as if it's little loud not very loud but should be listened by other people they know you are in a haram and whenever you know you climbing hill say labbaik when you coming down say labbaik all the time basically either much as possible actually some some people in the coach should keep repeating like you know abdul hakim should say ibrahim some people in the front they keep <coughs> saying our lord everybody can follow them people don't don't sleep you know make people awake to keep saying like if this actually allah want to listen to this this actually is, you know pe- people make clearly the women also the women don't need to say very loudly but also they should say in a pronounce the words labbaik allahumma labbaik properly two sheets uh, let me show uh, how to put on where the sheet? this is huh? okay it is very easy it's not very difficult but for the people who are coming for the first time so you know what happens is one you make you know like lower one to so like that just basically easy just you know put here and then you know just make like that you see it holding itself nothing nothing too difficult making sure and the second one just put on like that usually but when we come to haram we need to what we say is tiba is tiba is to put for to uncover the right shoulder and then put on on the left one like that you see this i'm going to explain this for you it is it's called istiba alif dad ba ba alif ain istiba because it goes from the from the dabu from the side so what happens you put on your haram as i explained to you and keep saying labbaik allahumma labbaik until your way until you come to makkah al-mukarram when you see the kaaba then don't say labbaik now because labbaik basically is saying that i am coming to you but now you have come anyway to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now you don't need to say labbaik what do you need to say dhikr now now you have to remember him the labbaik was that i am coming ibrahim said adhan and now you respond to adhan so when you arrive there you don't need to say same thing again just thinking it there you know it is not sometimes some people were that they always you know keep following same way in islam all the time keep thinking now labbaik ends as soon as you are in in in, in the in the haram now say subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allah akbar wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al ali alazim and you know many many tasbihat the hadith when you see the kaaba first time whatever you ask it is accepted any dua you make first time accepted imam abu hanifa rahmatullah was very clever to he first time when he came and he saw the kaaba to he made dua o oh allah whatever i ask you during my stay in makka i accept it so now he make one dua includes every single thing So, he's, so he said, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever I ask, you know, ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he just want to, you ask anything he can give you, so you can make like that. I'm, I also used to say similar because, you know, I used to so much impressed by Abu Hanifa, rahmatullah ta'ala. Then I was thinking really, he, he, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, you know, much more wise than anybody else. You know, see what, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always used to ask taqwa, piety, because, you know, if, once you have taqwa, then you have got everything anyway. In Allah, ma'al muttaqeen. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to, I, I think really, <coughs> when you see the Kaaba, ask Allah, oh Allah, make me muttaqi. If you become muttaqi, then, you, then everything with you anyway. Allah is with you, for success in this world is with you, in hereafter with you, you know, provision comes from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps saying that, though, umay taqillaha ij'allahu makhraja, we are zukhum min haithu la yahtasib, those who are muttaqi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, gives them from where they cannot imagine. And, 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 and in Allah ma'al muttaqin, Allah is with the people who are taqwa. So anyway, you can make any dua, you can, uh, you can make dua of Rabbi ja'ali muqeem as-salah, oh Allah make me to establish the prayer. Because once you establish the prayer, then Allah is with you anyway. So whatever, and also you can see many other things you can have, but uh, it is bad for the believers just to ask a small thing. That oh Allah give me a wife or something like that, you know, a small thing. Because that he, he gives anyway, you can ask also that, eh? but ask a big thing. Because once he loves you, then he can give you to a- a- anything. So, you know, don't ask a small thing. You know, that, you know, in like, you know, Tablighi Jamaat people say, buy the cow for milk. Dung will come anyway. Don't buy the cow for the dung. That this cow has more dung, so I buy this cow. No, buy the cow which has more milk. So, you know, when you come there, this, and then, uh, no doubt, we're going to start Tawaf. And Tawaf will start from the uh, black stone. It is Sunnah to kiss the stone and then start Tawaf. And start Tawaf goes right away. 
to you go you move right side of the Kaaba. I don't like people when they say anti-clockwise because you know it, it is a negative term. You know, clock goes anti-tawaf. That we can say, but tawaf is not anti-anything. Tawaf is in the right direction. It is right. You go right direction. That's what it should be. So I don't like these books when they write like that. Very very bad way. Simple thing is, you know, you are, you go, you take the right of Kaaba. Simple. That how it's in Islam is everything right. So you start from the black stone and you move on the right of the Kaaba. You know, so either you kiss. It is crowd, you cannot kiss, you can touch, if you cannot touch it, so at least the person sometimes used to, you know, uh, 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 you know, touch with something else in his stick or something in his hand. If you cannot do anything at least at the moment, so at least point to it, like that, I say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then, right, and keep doing dhikr, don't take photos and all those, because, you know, you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Urban Zubair said, once Abdullah, Abdullah Umar was doing tawaf, I also was with him in tawaf, so I said to Abdullah Umar, I want to, in Tawaf, I said to him, I want to marry your daughter Sauda. So Abdullah Umar did not answer me, so I was appoint, disappointed that you know, he did not listen, he did not actually accept my proposal. And then I, after Umrah, I came to Medina, so he met me uh, in somewhere. So he said, you know, you remember that you mentioned to me the um, name of my daughter Sauda when you do Tawaf, uh, uh, but you know, in Tawaf, Allah Ta'ala. In Tawaf, we are seeing Allah. Allah was there. So I did not like to say anything, but if you still want to marry, then I can marry her. He said, yeah, I, you know, my desire to marry her is as strong as possible. And then he called her, his, his daughter, and few people, not in big gathering, and he married immediately. So you see, like, Allah, in tawaf, you see Allah. It's very bad, really, you see yourself. You want to make your picture. In tawaf, believers should not see anybody else. You know, this photo, how long they will last? And the what benefit they do, I don't understand, really, people make their own photos, they were doing tawaf. What, what memory is there, really? Is it enough for you to do tawaf? Allah, make and just record you. Why you want to make your own photo? Make and just do this thing. If I just make photo, that's a more lasting and remaining all the time. No, unnecessary really, you know, wasting the time. Just, you know, keep doing tawaf and Allah SWT, you know, and remembering him and thinking properly, you know, house of Allah SWT. And Alhamdulillah, actually, among all the things in the Hajj Umrah, the best thing I like is tawaf really. Tawaf is so nice to, you know, to first, uh, when you go to, to the corners of the, uh, you know, uh, 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 of the house of Allah SWT, the Kaaba, the four corners. So one is uh, you know, where you start, uh, that is ar rukun Yamani and where Hajj al-Aswad is. Then you go and that is ar rukun al-Iraqi. Then you have ar rukun al-Shami. Then you have uh, again ar rukun al-Yamani. The two, two rukun are Yamani. Both rukun al-Yamani, they are on the foundation of Ibrahim. Other two rukun al-Iraqi and Shami, they are not on foundation of Ibrahim. Actually, foundation of Ibrahim was a little bit more. But Quraysh did not have enough money, so they basically built Kaaba less than what it was. So that why the Prophet whenever he did tawaf, he only kissed two, two, two rukun, Yamani one. So when you uh, kiss or you do istilam, of the, istilam means touching or kissing, or pointing. So when you start from the black stone, that rukun Yamani. Then you come to rukun, rukun Iraqi, then you come to rukun Shami. Then again you come to another rukun, that's a rukun Yamani. There you also should do istilam, like that. And then you come to or this Rukun Yamani, where Hajar Black Stone is, both are Rukun Yamani. Here, uh, your one shot is complete. Now again, you know, you raise hand, and the second shot, seven shots you do. In the first three shots, the men, they do what is Taiba and Ramil, meaning it, you uncover your right shoulder, the, in the first three one. And then you move, uh, you know, Ramal. Ramal means you move like a brave people, like fighters. Reason is when the Prophet came for Umrah al Qada and Quraysh were on the mountain. So they said, Oh, these people, you know, the weather of Medina has made them very weak. So when the Prophet realized, then he said, Oh, may walk like, you know, fighters, you know, the proper, the, then you know, like, so that becomes Sunnah. So now it is Sunnah to walk like that, in, you know, moving your chest properly. Like, you know, like people do marching in the army, so similar should be in the first three shows. And then after that, you don't need to uh, Ramal. Ramal is only in the first three shows. Uh, so, and then you are seven. After seventh, you know, you do two rak'ah prayer in the haram anywhere. It is better to do near uh, Maqam Ibrahim. So, there is a place in haram, you know, it is framed with a glass and there is footstep of Ibrahim al Islam. But anyway, this is called Maqam. Actually, we, uh, to me, <coughs> Maqam Ibrahim is the whole Kaaba, the whole area around that. But anyway, <coughs> many people think this is, uh, you know, the Maqam Istisha Ibrahim. It is better to do two rak'ah around uh, that area. Two rak'ah prayer, make a dua also. Then come and drink water of Zamzam. Then after that you go and do Sa'i. And Sa'i will start from Safa. Because the Prophet said, Ibdawu bima Abhi Allah Ta'ala. Start from where Allah started. 
to from Safa to Marwa, one one shout from Marwa to Safa two. This is how it happened. The seventh time meaning basically is that you start from from Safa and last one will be in Marwa, ending will be in Marwa. <coughs> when men are walking, so there are a place cut it is called between two uh, you know green signs, Milan al Khadarain. It is very much marked green area. So when men come there, they have to run faster, walk faster, you can say, like running. Reason is because Safa and Marwa both were hill. So when Hajar Allah, she used to run, so she could see her child as well. But when she, she comes to the you know this uh, this place, it was like 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 basically wily. So she could not see her child, so there she used to run. You know, as long as she is on Safa, so she can walk and she also could see smile. So she's fine, but when she comes down, she could not see smile, so she's now running. So, you know, people say, you know, in Islam, women don't have any position. Actually, Safa and Marwa is a memory for women, nothing else. Safa and Marwa is, Ibrahim did not walk on Safa and Marwa. Ismail did not walk on Safa and Marwa. Safa and Marwa is just actually memory of women. She was running between these two mountains, you know, seven times, and it became, you know, part of the, uh, part of the ritual. So anyway, the men have to walk there faster. They walk faster everywhere, but they're like running. Is it clear? So when you go to Marwa, you run there, and when you come from Marwa to Safa, same thing in their place. Is it clear? You know, I mentioned that the reason is because when she was looking for the water, the Ismail was lying, and when she came to Safa, so she could look, look water, and she also could, could see Ismail there lying. But when she's coming down, now she cannot see Ismail. So she's running to Marwa, so she also can be able to see Ismail. To that place she was running. To that why running has become their sunnah. Though it is, it is sunnah for women, but somehow it is not sunnah for the women. Now women don't run. Women only walk on their normal speed. Men have to run. Men have to copy the women running. Women have to become, you know, their normal speed. That's how the sunnah in this place is. Once you have done the seventh shout, then the, for the men it is better to shave their head, you know, properly. If you cannot shave, then you can shorten the hair. And in Hanafi Madhab, it is better to uh, do shortening or uh, shaving for the most of the hair, most of the head. That, that you know, in Hanafi Madhab, otherwise in some Madhab, they allow, you know, any, any part of the, like Imam Shafi allow few hair that also come down. For the women, the Sunnah is to shorten the hair. Because for the women, the hair is beauty. So just if you shorten some hair, in, uh, you know, some, something from, from their, you know, long hairs, that, that's fine. They cut with the scissors something. So that after you have done this, then you are free of a haram. You know, you can have come in your bath, you can come in your normal clothes, and then after that, do either many tawaf as you like. Now you don't need, you know, to do any umrah. If people, some people want to do umrah, it's allowed. You can go to Miqat and, you know, Hill. Hill, hill is a, that area, if people want to do a haram, they can go there. And nearest one is Masjid of Aisha, because she did a haram from there. So many, many you know, buses and taxis, they keep going there. You can go there put on a haram, come back again, do another umrah. So either is there, you can do many, many umrah. Though the, it, we don't know any sunnah of the Prophet he, in the same journey, he did more than one umrah. So I personally prefer do either many tawaf as possible. A tawaf you cannot do anywhere in the world. That's the only place where you can do tawaf. This. And when you stay there, all the time keep remembering Rahim al-Islam, the Prophet Muhammad the sacrifices, and think really that Allah is there. It's Allah's the house, you know. And uh, you know, I, I think that you have come to learn how to pray, and I have come to learn how to be patient. Don't complain anything. Complaining is very. Allah Subhanahu wa never likes any complaint. That's why Allah loves Yaqub al Islam. Because Yaqub said, "Inna ma'ashku bathi wa huzni Allah." His son has been taken away from him. So much patience. He said, "I will only complain my grief to who? To Allah." Even Yaqub never complained to anybody else. He never actually angry with the children. He see, they, he knows that they they are lying. But still, you can see he behaves with them nice, listens to them, and the people in the house. So much sabr for Yaqub al-Santu. You know, we have to learn the sabr in this journey. I think I should stop here, inshallah. And if you have a question, please ask. When we say labik, Allahumma labik, um, can it be said in unison? Oh, I've heard that's not allowed. Where everyone says it together. No, it can do that. Or sometimes people can remind. You know, many can make don't make any hybrid. Because it compels you to go to the old jamaah anyway. 
so you can see on your own you can see with the jamaa but don't make anything you know jama is one thing good it reminds it, it so sometimes they should say the people awake and then everybody says then when again it starts sleeping then somebody else again starts saying to buy do doing again again people awake keep up otherwise people forget but don't make anything habit assalamu alaikum mm-hmm. i want to ask that um, when you go to dhuha halifa mm-hmm. we will do salat al asr two rak'ah yeah and then after that the niya there's no reason to do it, uh, any additional or before the asr any special two rak'ah or, or, or nafil no no the thing is a haram should be done after any prayer any prayer is fard prayer or if there's no fard but the nafil prayer so once we going to do fard anyway what will happen so we can say that everybody wears there once everybody done wudu we do prayer together and we make a haram together and come out otherwise you know, it takes so long time if everybody do themselves you know take time we have to be quick you know to we can reach to makkah al-mukarramah earlier they can do the you know, tawaf and say quickly and they can sleep in the night i actually have a number of questions but i know i'm restricted to one otherwise i'll be thrown out in shaitan um <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, this one. Uh, when we do the tu'af, we should be in a state of wudu because it's an act of ibadah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's a, yeah. Uh, so I just wondered, what if uh, after, I don't know, uh, three tu'af, my wudu breaks, you know, for wh- whatever reason, need to go re-perform the Do I restart my tu'af again or do I start from where I left off? Yeah, this is a good question that I should have mentioned. So any tu'af is like prayer. So it is, it, tu'af should be done as we pray. means the major and you know should be pure from any major or minor impurity to ghusl and, and wudu properly and if your wudu is broken in the middle of tawaf go do wudu and start from where you left you don't need to repeat everything but like you had a three shot start you maybe three shot and third shot you were near rukna al iraqi to go and come back and start from there you don't need you actually tawaf is not obligated to done in one go you can do in in one week one week one shot one day second shot the second day Tawaf does not need to be done in the same way. But as long as you don't do Tawaf, you remain in a haram. But Tawaf is not necessary to be done in the same way. So this understand. For the women, there is problem. Sometimes women, uh, you know, there are monthly cycles. So no, they can do a haram from here. They, they should do a haram. They should do a haram. They should have bath for a haram. You know, that, that bath is only for a haram. And if they are not pure, they should arrive there. They should do zikr. They can go to Safar Marwa and see the Kaaba. Because seeing the Kaaba itself is ibadah. and Safa Marwa is out of haram. So you can see, they can sit there and see the Kaaba. Once they are pure, then they have bath and they do tawaf, and after that they can do sai. Sai does not need purity any. So after, for example, if a woman, when she did tawaf, she was pure, and after a tawaf, her cycle starts. There's no harm. Still, she can do sai. Sai does not need any purity. Sai does not need wudu. Sai does not need any purity. Because you know, these days, you know, some, our, our return flights, they are booked. If it is actually happens that women's, uh, you know, uh, uh, cycle starts uh, when we arrive in Makkah, and until we are there, still there, you know, and the, what we can do, we cannot delay the flights. So then the solution basically is uh, they should tie the clothes around, uh, uh, you know, uh, their place and properly, and then do tawaf, making sure there's no impurity in the haram, and then they offer a blood. And that actually sacrifice will be uh, like, you know, like a, 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 a sacrifice of a camel. Major, major, you know, animal, and that will be done. So that is the ruling for the women. Another question? Sheikh, when starting the tawaf, is there just one takbir or two takbirs? Uh, Mufti Shafi Sahib, he mentions in his kitab, it's, it's two takbirs. So one is takbir tahrima, and the second is the istilam. No, no, there's nothing, two, nothing, there's just, this is bismillah. It's a sunnah, if you don't do that, it's, nothing happened. It's not like the takbir tahrima of the prayer. In prayer, if you don't say Allah Akbar, prayer is not valid. In tawaf, it, it, this is not obligatory, just sunnah. You say Bismillah, Allah Akbar, and the move on. Not at once. It is not actually takbir tahrir. It, it is not salah. It is only one thing. It is basically Islam, nothing else. It is just for Islam. There is nothing to. It is only one. It is sunnah. It is not obligatory. It is not wajib. In the salah, takbir tahrir is wajib. The fard. In, in the prayer, in the tawaf, it is not wajib. It just technically, if you don't say anything, it's fine. Assalamualaikum. Is there any significance of the seven circuits? Someone told me to ask. Is there a significance in the number? Oh, number. Number actually are very important, uh, you know, understand. Thing. As I mentioned, really, is uh, that one number is only for Allah and the second is uh, completion. 
for human be for for other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Two numbers make completion, and uh, if uh, you made the third one in the middle, so it is more complete because then you have uh, one and two and something in the middle areas. Because something in the middle it actually is connected with the both. It is more complete. Then you add one more, it becomes two pairs. It is even more complete to four. And if you make something in the middle, to uh, two or two and then one middle. Five, it is more complete. That you can see the prayer time, time, time the prayer five times. Okay, more complete. But rakah the prayer is not five. Rakah the prayer is either two or three or four. So you can see prayer actually resembles all the completion. First, um, first complete number is two. Second complete number is three. The, four, the fourth, third, fourth complete number is fourth. And the, the, after that is five. So it, it, it actually goes to uh, you know all those. In other than prayer, you know what happens is. The completion of you know goes beyond the five, and uh, beyond the five, what happens? You add one more six, but six uh, since uh, having something in middle always uh, is more complete. So that why you can see in many methods Islam seven number important, because seven number basically means you have got six a complete number and then something in middle which makes it more complete. So that happens many methods, and also what happens when you have seven, it also gives you impression it is not complete. It needs one one more. So you keep doing more and more. So you do one tawaf, <coughs> you know, not complete. Do again, more, second tawaf, third tawaf, fourth tawaf. So when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants Ibadah to be done more and more, He makes them odd number. After completion, odd number. So five times the prayer, then you think, oh, it's five, five not complete. Let me do more nafla, more sunnah, more prayer. So He wants you to get sense of completion, but also sense of incompletion. So when I show about the numbers, I will teach inshallah sometime when I teach about the prayers. Because I want to, one day I will teach about the what prayers that we are. So I will teach about numbers inshallah properly here. Yeah. It's just a quick question. I don't think I quite caught what you said. But um, every, so is it each time you're passing the black stone, you raise your hands and say Allahu Akbar? Yeah, it's still But it's not, a, you know, it's not obligatory. It, it, yeah. it is sunnah. It is mustahab okay. recommended. But it's not obligatory. And if you don't do anything, nothing happens. And the corner before that, I can't remember the name. Do you also? Then you also do istilam there. You also raise your hand yeah, and say yeah, Allah. Yeah. Okay. Two rukun only have istilam because both rukun as had all four pillars been on the foundation of Ibrahim, then the Prophet would have done istilam of all four. But since two of them are not his foundation, so no no point to touch the just wall. So he was he was touching the corner of Ibrahim. So he only touched the two corners, not the other two. I just want to add on this. There are lights. I think blue or green lights. Uh, so if you try to visit the Kaaba, so if this is the where the black stone is, and this would be the other Rukun Yamani. And so there's lights kind of hitting other. So even if you can't see the Ka uh, black stone, it's quite difficult to see, to be honest. Just follow the lights. It's like a laser beam light. So that would make it easy to see. Mm, yeah. so you know, you will see also see, when the people come to the black stone, you know, the people slow down. You can see really. That's that the place where everybody slow down. Because everybody do is stopping there. Just, you know, you, you can shall I see there. there. Hmm. Um, you mentioned about uh, the Istislam on the uh, uh, Rukun Yamani before the Black Stone. Yeah. And you said and you said that um, you can even kiss this corner as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was here uh, on Umrah previously, there was a, a man with a big beard who had chosen to stand there, and when everyone was kissing that corner before the Black Stone, he was. Basically, telling them off and shouting at them, and no, not, not that. I think other corners, not that corner. Not that corner. I don't think it, it was that the corner. One. People do Islam anyway. That I remember. People do touch and you know, kiss. That is that. Because people were doing this, yeah. yeah and yeah. and he was saying no, no, and he was. He seemed to think this was they. They thought it was the black stone or something, or so. I, uh, I you've not heard of this. I okay. don't know if somebody do like that. But anyway, what I know is Islam is a far both rukun. Yes, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah. Um, Sheikh, what are the best places to make dua around the Kaaba? Is there a specific area? Yeah, you know, can do. Actually, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, like it is basically the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, you know, especially like the gate, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to, you know, hold part of the gate that's called Murtazam and cry there and weep there and you know, because like you know, like you hug your mum. So, basically, simple that Allah Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala door, to, you know. You know, Kaaba, you know, Kaaba, you can say black stone. Black stone is like Allah's right hand in this world. Simple to understand. Black stone basically like Allah's right hand in this world. 
to you know it is in 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 the kaaba to you just want to hold it you just want to you know touch it you want to kiss it you know this is what happening to the kaaba the whole kaaba actually any place people can you know kiss people can do you know because it's allah's house so that what the meaning is but it's simple say no doubt really that we do this because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us otherwise we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're not worshiping the house worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala house is basically like our 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 point of reference you can say but worshiping allah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is like qibla house is qibla to like you know iqbal says mara fis poetic words qibla ko ahal nazar qibla numa kehte hain the people of thinking they think kaaba is not the qibla it actually guide to qibla qibla is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when you are to to qibla this is actually only guide guide to the qibla is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no doubt he is the real qibla the brother ifon asked a question earlier on uh, if hatim was a part of the kaaba what can we not face it and pray salah so you know the thing is the hatim uh, you know since it has been from the, from the time the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been out of the kaaba not in the kaaba so you uh, you must make effort to face the building not the hatim do it actually we believe that it is part of kaaba because that was all for that actually is always doubtful because since allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know made this happen so now uh, you know hatim is not uh, you know part of the kaaba anymore you know do it should be so people don't allow people you know fuqaha don't allow just to face the hatim you have to face if you are hatim face in a way you can face face part of the kaaba as well actually the people say there hikma in keeping the hatim like that so you know because most believers they are not allowed to enter the kaaba now because the hatim you can go in hatim it is like playing the kaaba so you know it, it for them it is it is free but uh, because since uh, you know it has been left out so now it, on its own it is not kaaba it was part of the kaaba but not anymore I was once told by an auntie that where the Kaaba is situated, straight above that is the Arsh of Allah. Is this true? What of Allah? Arsh of Allah. Arsh of Allah. Is this true? I don't know. Because the thing is, Arsh of Allah is encompassed the whole universe. To everywhere, anywhere you see above that Allah, Arsh of Allah, because Wasi Akursi Hu Samawati Warad. So you know, He's the Kursi encompassed the whole universe. It is basically around every single thing. To, you know, you can see the heaven, <laughs> first heaven, second heaven. Al Baytul Ma'mur. Yeah, there is a place yeah. which uh, and just do tawaf. Oh, so yeah, yeah, that actually above the Kaaba. Yeah, to oh, okay. the, it is like this Kaaba and another Kaaba. Their Kaaba is for angels. Al uh, Baytul Ma'mur. Uh, that is where and just do tawaf. It is, it, it is people say it, yeah, it's straight oh, okay. above that. Yeah, yeah, Al Baytul Ma'mur. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, is there any prayers after tawaf? Sorry? Is there any prayers after tawaf? Yeah, I mentioned two rakah. It was if after two after tawaf you do two rakah prayer. Exactly. It was if yeah, it should be done. It was if two rakah prayer. Anyone else? 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 Um, sorry, inshallah. Um, while we're in a state of ihram, we know we can't, you know, put perfume on, cut our nails, and cut our hairs. So, um, I just wanted to ask: does does that also mean that you can't cut anybody else's hair? So, for example, I'm in tawaf. Uh, I've finished my umrah. It's now time to cut the hair. You know, so uh, we need to have our hair shaved first. So, what if you, the wife needs to, you know, come out of ihram? So, how can anybody's hair? You can cut it. You know you are not allowed to hunt any any animals or other, but your own you you cannot cut. But you know somebody else, I don't think there is problem. I don't think anybody said like that. You know hunting animals or something like that that's not allowed. You know take, cutting the any tree of the haram that's not allowed. This thing is not allowed. So but if somebody else, because the company that they did they sh- they shared other people. Think really if all the people were in haram, so how they came out from haram? Somebody somebody shaved somebody else. And that could have happened when the Prophet came. So you, if you shave somebody else, that's fine. Sheikh, uh, can you explain what's allowed regarding to certain things people sometimes use to keep up the ihram? So some people use the money belts to keep keep it on. Some people I've seen before, like people use a. Uh, Big safety pins for the top ones to keep that together. 
what's allowed and what's not allowed in terms of those things? Yeah, I think the cloth eh, should be unsewn. But some things are not part of the cloth, like your bag, handbag, or like you say, belt, eh, you know, is allowed, or like your pins, eh, because pins are not sewing. Pins are basically helping you, that's fine. So pins are allowed, belts are allowed. If people have got some handbags and you know, hanging, all these things are allowed, but not sewn cloth. The cloth, it should not be sewn. But something not part of the cloth, eh, that's fine. They can, they can allow. The bet always have been allowed because they are from very beginning because people used to have money. So they can't live anywhere. And at that time, people did not have a hotel. So if they leave money somewhere else, somebody will steal. So they used to have, you know, this belt. So the belt actually came from now. They used to call it himyan. So himyan always have been allowed. So you can have belt. Yeah, sometimes for some people it's very difficult to tie it properly. So if you cannot tie, then you, yeah, have belt. And if you come to Dula Halefa, when Abiy Ali, they're, they're selling, you know, they sell uh, these, these belts there. You can buy the belts there. <coughs> you can buy belts here as well, you know, anywhere. So if some people cannot you know, tie properly, then yeah, put on the belts, inshallah. Uh, are we allowed to wear watches and uh, rings? Say what? Are we allowed to wear watches and yeah, rings? Yeah, watch is fine, because it is something, it's not cloth. So that's allowed. Watch is fine, yeah. Right. Anyone else got questions? Oh, it's a ring. It's like that. They're fine. Assalamu alaikum. Just, um, I think for those who are doing Umrah for the first time, I think there's one co uh, common problem they have is when they do Tawaf, yeah. people forget on which number you know they are. Sometimes they forget what you know if they're on the second one or the third one. What should they do? Yeah, that's very important. If, um, don't make sure they don't forget because it's very important. So you know, count. Eh? Make like once you have done one. Just you know, put on one f finger, put your hand on one finger, the second one, second finger, third finger, you know, four, five, then, s s you know, make something, let us be something, take, eh? you have to count. Eh? Anyway, if you forget, eh, then we go to the least number. If you say we're sixth, or, sixth or seventh, to make it six. That will allow to when this matter happens. If you think more likely seventh, then fine. If you don't think it, which one is more likely, then go for the least number. If doubt it between three and four, make it three, and then do the four and uh, fifth and sixth, seventh. But you know, people should make effort really young, but that's what you're doing, which, which, which shows you are. Is it clear? Yeah. Any more questions? The, the, the salah after the tawaf is wajib. Yeah. Can you perform the salah after asr and after fajr? No. Yeah, the salah actually should not be done in makruh time. So you have to wait. Kind of Hanafi madhab, salah never should be done after asr or after fajr prayer until sun rises properly in midday. All the time which is makru, this salah should not be done. So if people have done tawaf and the makru time comes, wait until the you know, makru time has gone, then you do your salah to rakaal. But you can do sai, there's not problem, there's no problem. You can do uh, you know, taw, uh, uh, salah later on. And this salah you do after every tawaf. You know, after you have done your umrah, you do uh, tawaf, you do to rakaal salah, then you do sai, the umrah finish. But after that, you can do as many tawaf you like, but after every tawaf, do two rakah prayer. After every tawaf. Any more questions? Mike. Some people, uh, when they do tawaf, when, when I, I remember once when I first came for Umrah, or second time in Hajj, somebody said, oh, today I did 100 tawaf. So he said, you did, she only did 100 tawaf? He goes, yeah, uh, so he, he thought that one tawaf, mm. it's one just going one, mm. not seven. Yeah, one, one tawaf means same and shout, same and rounds, understand? When we say one tawaf, it means same and rounds. So same and, and, and also understand, once you start tawaf, then completion becomes obligatory. Then you must do same and shout. It's understand, it's not that you can live in middle anywhere. Once you started, you must complete it. Not in the same go, maybe a later on after that you want to go for lunch or dinner, but you have to do seven. Is it clear? So one tawaf means seven shots, seven rounds. And once they start, then it becomes obligatory to complete it. Simple thing. Same actually Hajj Umrah. When you start, then it becomes obligatory. After starting, completion becomes obligatory. Other Umrah is a sun, sunnah. But once you make a haram intention, then completion of Umrah becomes obligatory. Once you start tawaf, like any nafla prayer, if you start nafla prayer kind of Hanafi madhab, then completing the nafla becomes obligatory. So similarly, when you start tawaf, completion becomes obligatory. I'll just uh, ask one question, Jeff, if that's mm. okay. Um, with 
With uh, regards to when it's uh, Fard Salah during your tawaf, what should one do when uh, Fard Salah is um, in between your, say, fifth uh, round? What should one yeah, do? Yeah, follow the Fard, do Fard, and then after that you start your tawaf from where you left. You know, it will happen. You know, you start doing tawaf, and then Maghrib prayer starts. Don't, don't worry, do Maghrib prayer, and then after that you start your tawaf from where you left. From where you are left. You know, that, that's very, very important to remember where you left, and then from there you start. Um, <coughs> question from earlier on, that in Nafal Tawaf, do you have to do Rommel and... Okay. No, there's no, nothing. The only first time, any Tawaf after which there is no Sa'i, there is no Rommel, no Isteba. After that, normal cloth, nothing. It is only for when you come for the Umrah, for, you know, first Tawaf, that will do. After that, no. After that, you just normal. normal. It actually will be no, normal cloth anyway. Sheikh, would you kindly remind me uh, of what the Hanafi position was regarding shaving the head? Yeah, most of the hair should be uh, uh, yeah, most, or shorten most of them, yeah. Yes, Sheikh. Uh, you said uh, an accepted dua is when you see the Kaaba first time. Mm -hmm. Is there any other point do during uh, our visit mm -hmm. where dua is accepted, like perhaps from Sa'i or any other point? In it, dua every time, the, in the whole journey is actually, mm -hmm. Allah is there. Mm -hmm. In the whole journey, He's looking at you. No doubt, it's like the whole journey basically very similar to the prayer. Understand, when you're in the prayer, Allah is turning to you. In the whole journey, when you put a haram, that's why don't backbite, don't lie, don't complain. Because you go, Allah's path, uh, complaining Allah to someone else, the thing really, all the problem comes in the path of Allah, and you're complaining Him. Nothing, should, basically, it's all the time, turning of the face should be Him. To me. Laughing loudly, making jokes, you know, making unnecessary stories, commenting on the people, you know, laughing at the people, making it with their bad names, nothing should happen. Looking at each other badly, men should not look at the women with the desire, women should not look at the men with the desire. All should be, you know, firmly people should understand they are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Basically, this whole thing is ibadah. Umrah from beginning until you finish, it is ibadah. Then your stay in Makkah al Mukarram is ibadah. In that city, sins are multiplied by many, many times, as good deeds are multiplied by many, many times. Understand, if you backbite there, the sin is not small, sin is much, much bigger. If you lie there, it is much, much bigger. If you break a promise, Sin is much, much bigger. In that place, be humble slave of Allah Taala. So now from when we put on a haram, from until we are in Makkah al-Mukarramah, be always, you know, in, in, uh, yeah, and thing I, I forgot. And when we leave Makkah al-Mukarramah, before leaving, we should do tawaf al wada Tawaf al wada last tawaf. Because, uh, you know, the Prophet has said that the last thing that you do in Makkah is <coughs> see house of Allah Go and do tawaf. Like salam of, of house. And then you... So when we, we are about to leave, before that people should have enough time, should be reminded of what time they do tawaf, to go and do last tawaf, but don't leave it to last moment, that everybody has to wait for you. You know, do in, a, in, in, in proper time when people announce you that what time you have to do tawaf, do tawaf and then come back. For the women, if they are, you know, they are, you know, they are not pure, there's no tawaf or wada for them, so they don't need to tawaf, tawaf. But if they are pure, then they should do also tawaf. Um, <coughs> can you just uh, remind us uh, what type of footwear is uh, permissible, please? What type of footwear? Because there's been quite a lot of issues. What type of uh, shoes, sandals? Yeah. No, and I mentioned this. Like, you, know, you know, wear anything which wear your three bones remain uncovered. Two side one, yeah, like something like that. Simple. Tell, 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 tell. <laughs> yeah. This is what you need to do. Yeah. So three bones, rising bones in the middle and two side bones. That's what people need to uncover. Then you'll be safe. Then your umrah will be cut every month. This is not allowed. It can, yeah, it can cover you know, your, your, your middle bone. Yeah. This. yeah, this can cover. We need more examples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three bones are this one here, mm. the front. Uh, I think and you yeah, said yeah, your metatarsals. Right, and the two ankle bones, okay? No, nothing, no stuff, nothing. It's be uncovered. Um, I just wanted to know, Sheikh, if uh, can you just uh, run uh, um, the penalties? So let's say, for example, out of I forget and I put uh, I put on some atar or you know I. Um, Accidentally, you may even cut my nails, bite my nails. So, what what, what are the sort of penalties yeah, that are due for this? Penalties, yeah, I don't remember all the penalties by heart because there's so many complications. For something that is there, sadaqa of one sa, like one fitra. For something more severe, that like one sheep, 
sacrifice and and major sacrifice actually is the climate but it only happens that three cases where major sacrifice come or mostly one blood means one 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 sheep will be enough and in many many small cases like a, somebody has covered their their head for a longer period there is some sadaqah something like that so for a small thing sadaqah and something bigger we have a sheep and then even bigger than that then camel i remember actually one one when i came for hajj so i met somebody from 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 salaw so he said i had offered a sacrifice of a camel so i said why, why what happened what did you do mistake he said uh, by mistake one of my hair was broken like he hair broken by mistake to what is in there is and for that he went uh, and offered sacrifice of whole camel <laughs> Because I think you have to go take you to the uh, things, uh, slaughterhouse and all those sort of things. We had one person who had to do a sheep last year. So do contact Badabu Kosar if you need to, you know, sacrifice an animal. Sheikh, from if from a previous Umrah now you realize that you made a mistake, should we do the sacrifice now? Yeah, s- sacrifice should be done in a harab to any time. You know, yeah, if you prove had done any, any, any major mistake which needs sacrifice, yeah, it should be done any time. 